Hi guys, this is day 23 of the 42 day AS economics division challenge and today we are doing strong versus weak exchange rate. When we say a country's currency is becoming strong, this means that the exchange rate of that country is going up. And the exchange rate going up means that, for example, previously if pound was one pound is equal to two dollar, now pound is one pound is equal to four dollar. Well, now what's the impact of this? pound becoming stronger on the prices of exports and imports. We say this, that if the pound is becoming stronger, then the exports of that country are becoming stronger and imports will be becoming cheaper. I want to explain this concept quickly again. Well, look at this. Uh, if one pound is equal to two dollar, uh, was the previous exchange rate, now pound becoming stronger means that if I am looking at exporting, same pound can give me four dollar worth of good which was previously giving me two dollar worth of good so i can get more u.s goods now because pound can buy me much more so exports are becoming uh, imports are becoming cheaper so from a perspective of uh, dollar pound buying u.s goods uh, the that ability is going to go up so imports will become cheaper at the same time when pound becomes stronger uh, if a U.S. citizen was paying $2 for one pound worth of good, now he has to pay $4 for one pound worth of good. So exports will become expensive and imports will become cheaper. I want to now talk about the possible sort of advantages of uh, uh, strong currency or what we say exchange rate going up or high exchange rate. The first advantage of uh, exchange rate becoming stronger is basically the downward pressure on inflation. When there is a strong exchange rate, there will be lower demand pull and cost push inflation. So when the exchange rate goes up, we are saying your inflation inflation goes down. So I'm going to explain this uh, point in detail. Let's first look at what we call demand demand pull inflation. So when the exchange rate is rising, we said this, that exports become expensive and imports become cheaper. This rise in the price of exports uh, will lead us to basically be able to buy uh, less exports. So demand for exports should fall and at the same time demand for imports should go up. Why? Because exports are becoming expensive and imports are becoming cheaper. When exports become expensive and people are buying less exports and if they are elastic in nature, I'm assuming goods are elastic, so export expenditure will fall and import expenditure will rise. And that means that X minus M goes down. X minus M goes down means AD, which is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M, AD falls. And a fall in AD means lower price level, and I'm going to show that in the diagram, causing basically lower demand pull inflation. How do we see that in the diagram? So our diagram that we want to draw is the one of uh, ADAS framework. On my y-axis, I'm going to write um, the price level. On my x-axis, I have real GDP. And we are saying this, that if this was my AD dot and AS dot, so let's say right now the price level is P naught, right? With the uh, with the uh, sort of uh, rise in exchange rate, X minus M falls, causing AD to fall. So AD falls to, for example, AD1, and therefore there will be a lower price level. So that's where we'll say that there will be a lower demand pull inflation because of stronger exchange rate. But then there is also what we call lower... lower cost push inflation. Let's explain how there will be lower cost push inflation. 
So if there is a strong exchange rate, we also know this, as we discussed earlier, a high exchange rate means imports will become cheaper. And if imports are becoming cheaper, and if key inputs like oil or any other key input is imported, that also means that basically quantity of imports will rise, but, and, but more importantly, our import expenditure will fall. And that means basically our cost of production, cost of production falls. Why is my cost of production going down? Well, because key input that I'm importing is becoming cheaper, cost of production falls, and that fall in the cost of production means aggregate supply rises, because remember, aggregate supply is uh, about the cost of production. So if there is a major reduction in the price of oil, then there is a fall in the cost of production, causing aggregate supply to rise, and that means price level will fall. So there will be not only lower demand for inflation, but also lower cost push inflation. And again, we can show that through our ADAS framework, where if this is our AD and uh, this is our sort of uh, AS, and currently we have uh, P naught as the price level, then there will be a rise in aggregate supply as oil becomes cheaper or key inputs become cheaper due to strong exchange rate and therefore not only GDP rises, but also your price level falls. So there is a lower, so there is a lower what we call uh, uh, cost push inflation in this country. Let me write this lower cost push inflation. So, the one uh, advantage uh, countries with strong exchange have is basically they have lower demand pull and lower cost push inflation. The second advantage of our strong exchange rate is this that we say more imports can be bought. Uh, why is more imports being an advantage? Well, we say that if more imports can be bought, this basically means there will be a higher standard standard of living as people can buy more imports, and that basically will be good for the economy as the welfare as the welfare of the economy economy prices. People are able to buy better phones, better, better uh, cars, better sort of uh, food items, um, and, and so on and so forth. And we, we say that imports become cheaper is actually uh, good news for a country which can import any high quality good for a low price now. The third uh, advantage that we want to point out uh, is basically the, that domestic producers may improve their efficiency. And the reason why domestic producers will improve their efficiency is simply the idea that exports are becoming expensive, so exporter will try to be as efficient as possible. Uh, when exports are becoming expensive uh, due to, due to uh, exchange rate going up, I, I as a producer can become more competitive by by lowering by lowering uh, the cost of production through through efficiency Similarly, if I am a domestic producer, because imports are becoming cheaper, I can also lower, uh, lower cost of production and become efficient. So there is a, there is a urge to become efficient whenever exchange rate rises, and there is an urge to lower sort of prices when the exchange rate rises as exports become expensive and imports become cheaper, and this can serve as an advantage for an economy. Lastly, we say this, that there's also uh, an advantage in terms of terms of trade to improve. So whenever, what is terms of trade? Terms of trade is simply a ratio of prices of exports to imports. So if your exports are becoming 
um, expensive and imports are becoming cheaper due to uh, exchange rate going up, then our terms of trade will improve. This rise in terms of trade may not necessarily be good, but what if I say this, that if both exports and imports are inelastic. If both exports and imports are inelastic, then basically what happens is, is that when the price of exports go up, the quantity of exports will fall by much less. And that makes our export expenditure to actually go up. Similarly, when imports are becoming cheaper, quantity of imports will rise by much less because they're already in elastic and import expenditure will end up falling. So exports rises, imports sort of fall and that may actually make our X minus M to go up rather than go down. So there could be a possibility if exports and imports are inelastic, uh, then the terms of trade improvement, let me write this, terms of trade, terms of trade improvement may lead to may lead to balance, balance of trade improvement. So that's uh, another advantage we want to point out. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of, uh, of a strong exchange rate. The first possible disadvantage of a strong exchange rate, we say, is the damage to export industries. As we can see that our exports are becoming expensive uh, due to uh, due to exchange rate due to exchange rate going up the impact of this would be lower quantity of uh, exports and that in turn means basically our export expenditure falls this fall in export expenditure means two things number one lower profits lower profits for export industry or exporter, but also because uh, there will be lower profits, there will be a possibility of lower employment as the exporter may need to ask some people to leave, lower employment and more importantly, lower GDP for the country because if X minus M goes down, then of course your country will have a lower aggregate demand that is not good for the country because GDP will fall. So if I go back to the diagram we made, if you go back to this diagram we made, if you look closer, that when your X minus M is going down, there is AD falling but also GDP falling. So the GDP fall means that not only our inflation falls, but that also has an impact in terms of uh, uh, lower GDP and therefore lower employment levels for the country. So the export industry will significantly take a hit of uh, a strong exchange rate if they do not have, let me write this, this is an important sentence, if, if they do not have inelastic demand because if they have inelastic demand then ex import export expenditure may go up but right now I'm assuming export expenditure will fall because demand for the goods is demand for the goods is elastic the next thing we want to talk about when it comes to sort of uh, disadvantage is there is that there will be also a damage to the to the domestic industries the damage to the domestic industries will be in the form of the idea that because our uh, because imports are becoming uh, cheaper, the domestic producers will also suffer. So domestic producers will become will become uncompetitive, and that results in them to unless they don't lower their prices, that results in in them to have a lower demand leading to sort of a lower profits, lower profits and therefore lower, lower output. The impact of this all in terms of your, 
your employment and in terms of GDP will be, this becomes also a source of uh, high unemployment in the domestic industries as there will be lower outputs and they don't, they don't need the workers anymore. So unemployment will go up and GDP contribution from domestic industries will fall. So the second impact that we have is uh, that the domestic producer will also be squeezed when the exchange rate is going up in a country. Lastly, there will also be a rise in trade deficit because of uh, a strong exchange rate. We know we saw this that as the exchange rate goes up, our x minus m, x minus m actually falls, and this fall in x minus m is not necessarily good for the country because when if you have a uh, current account deficit in the balance of pay, uh, payment, then there has to be funding of that current account deficit. That funding can come from uh, a surplus elsewhere, but that funding may also come from borrowing from abroad. Like in the case of in the case of Pakistan, because of the current account deficit, they have to sort of borrow from abroad. This borrowing from abroad is not, not necessarily true, good for the country because A, it's a liability which means it has to be paid in the future and B, this current account deficit will also mean a country may end up doing some very restrictive policies which may not be good. So whenever exchange rate goes up, X minus M falls, which means a country run into what we call a current account or trade deficit. This trade deficit can be damaging because it can result in low reserves, low, low reserves or uh, borrowing from abroad borrowing from abroad and sometimes restrictive restrictive fiscal and uh, monetary fiscal and monetary policy now we will talk about this um, fiscal and monetary policy being restrictive uh, as a disadvantage in a later discussion but the idea is just that when you have contractionary or restrictive fiscal and monetary policy are eighty falls, which basically leads to also further fall in um, GDP and uh, a further sort of uh, rise in unemployment. Now, these are the uh, various advantages and disadvantages of uh, what we call strong currency. If you're writing an answer for a weak currency, you need to flip the argument. So I'm not discussing it here, but basically whatever the advantages of a strong currency becomes the disadvantages of uh, weak currency and so on.